everybody, my name is Sarah Justice. I'm the Executive Director of the Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art. I want to welcome you to our online art auction this year. Due to COVID, we had to make some changes and we are doing it online. I am shooting some videos today um, and what I want to talk to you today is about the historic preservation of this amazing building. Um, and we have three fund needs in our art auction. One of them is for the historic preservation, one of them is for collections and exhibitions, and the other one is for the education department. I'm going to be talking to you today about a need that we have to help fund our two new boilers that we have in this amazing facility. So follow me inside. Historic preservation is an important way for the Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art to tell its story of the past and pass along to the future generations. The building is described as a modified Norman style in the His National Historic Register. It is in fact a version of a popular turn of the century Romanesque style for, for public buildings made famous by Boston architect H. H. Richardson. This building was built in 1896. Note the sandstone structure and large interior exposed beams and arched windows and archways in the interior of the building. One of the distinct features of the building at that time was an enormous clock tower that was almost the same height of the building. The city was becoming urbanized at that time and time was of the essence. The clock tower symbolized the importance of time time for learning, and time for the city as it was being built, and interaction of commerce. It is the square's mission to preserve and maintain this 48,000 square foot structure, which is now 124 years old. Education is its foundation since its inception in 1896. Originally, the building was built as Central High School, and in 1930, the school transitioned into a middle school that lasted until 1975. The middle school was called Paris Gibson Junior High. This building was world class for its time and stood out like no other building in Great Falls. It was beautifully surrounded by meadows at that time. It's definitely transitioned, you know, into a, a metropolitan city, so to speak, in, in uh, Great Falls, but you'll see some images here that show the meadows that surrounded the high school at the time. Another thing that I'll point out, and you'll see some images here, is in 1977, right around that time, 1977, the early 80s, the annex was demolished for the making of a movie called Telethon. So enjoy some of those images uh, about that. And so now the structure just mainly stands. The annexes are gone. Um, and I soon will take you down to the boiler room and talk to you a little bit more about one of our needs. Thank you. Hi everybody, I am down here in the education department this is the door that enters into our boiler room. I'm going to take you in, talk to you a little bit about the history and a, and a legend uh, that took place down here in the boiler room. So follow me. As I was mentioning earlier in the video, I talked about two brick annexes that were built and that were eventually blown up. But the history has it is 1913 these annex was built and the boiler system was moved from the basement of the original building to the outside between the two buildings serving both facilities. Great Falls is super cold in the winter. We have long, long winters here and it's super important that we have a boiler that maintains climate control in our art museum. Legend has it is that the former boiler room was converted into a swimming pool actually and it was 10 feet deep at the shallow end. Can you believe that? A few years later a student drowned and the pool was condemned and used only for storage until the annex was demolished and the boilers were moved back into their current location. Research has not been able to prove or disapprove this story. 
There's no official records of a pool in the original building nor of a student drowning on the school property. However, several alumni have sworn that the legend of the drowning in the original building is true. So part of the reason, or the main reason we have this video uh, that I'm providing for you today is we need, we have a fund need and our need is for the historical preservation and help to fund these two new boilers that we ended up putting in last fall. Uh, early spring, um, we, our older boiler actually failed its inspection and we had no choice but to jump on it and get two new boilers installed into the museum as fast as possible. Um, we had an amazing crew of people. Combustion Services is the, is the, um, uh, the, the contractors that, that actually installed the boilers. They did an amazing job and within four months they were able to put those boilers in before winter hit and major cold kicked in. So we're super blessed to have these two new boilers. They're state of the art. These boilers will last for the next 40 to 50 years. And it's super important that we have the public and the community help support preserving this amazing structure that Great Falls houses and that houses our art museum. Hi. I am Nicole Evans. I am the Curator of Art here at Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art. And I want to tell you a little bit about the needs we need funded here in the Curatorial Department. So please listen and find out what we need. Thank you. There is a common misconception that the museum's auction funds the Curatorial Department, meaning the exhibitions and the collection solely. But the reality is, is that the museum's auction actually funds the entire museum. Operations, facilities, education, and exhibitions. Everything that we need. So my plea to you in this need that we need filled is to focus on the collections and exhibitions that we, do, that we have and do here at the museum. We really do need your support to make them great and wonderful. Did you know that to an art museum that an art museum's main purpose is to collect, preserve, interpret, and exhibit objects of artistic and historical importance? All of this for the betterment of society? Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art could not be the amazing museum it is without the collections, exhibitions, and artists we hold and support. I need your help to fund three needs within the curatorial department. The care of over 800 pieces of art in our collections, our exhibitions, and our new artist projects. When you give to these needs, you will help the square thrive and continue to inspire the public through art history and education. The Square's collections were started by the Junior League of Great Falls in 1974 and are now comprised of notable pieces by renowned artists like Peter Volkos and Joan Quick to See Smith, Richard Swanson, and important Montana artists like Jim Poor, Jerry Rankin, Monty Dolak, Sheila Miles, Lisa Easton, as well as groundbreaking outsider artists like Dr. Charles Smith and our very own Lee Steen to name only a few of the great examples. Your donation will help the museum repair and enhance the storage facilities for our treasured art collections, in addition to improving our searchable online art records, as well as provide the proper cataloging for our collections. Your giving will also make exhibitions possible by providing funds for curatorial research and writing, which aims to uphold the museum's collection and advocate for new creative artwork. Exhibitions are the source of museum education and programs, which are meant to engage the public via the arts and the humanities. Additionally, your gift will provide much needed coverage for basic costs, like gallery lighting, travel, shipping costs for artists, honorariums for artists and guest lectures, as well as gallery educational materials, which include didactic texts, wall labors, interactive centers, audio-visual equipment for films and audio tours. 
you can also provide monies for artistic achievement under New Artist Project, which would allow an artist to be fully funded to create new work with the purpose of exhibiting at the museum and further develop their career as an artist. For example, our up-and-coming artist Christina Roth in the exhibition Awakening is a new artist project that will be exhibited in October. Christina Roth is a multimedia artist that lives and works in Spokane, Washington, who is German of descent but raised in infancy through infant, from infancy in Lagos, Nigeria, where her life journey was, has been imprinted in deep and profound ways. She seeks to express life's journey, our interconnection to all of it and all of its fullness. This exhibition is a multi-layered and interdisciplinary project that is two years in the making. Two years! The artist project will be presented in an exhibition titled Christina Roth Awakening. Roth's intent is to create unity through art while focusing on universe, universally shared values like hope and equality, which she terms as one heart call. Together in a community, that is what she is focusing on. The One Heart, the Project of Humanity. And that is kind of what we do here at Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art. We speak through the art, the basic form of expression for all mankind, in a unifying manner. And that is why we need your support and your care to help the Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art uphold its standards in art exhibitions and collections. Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art is a non-profit regional contemporary art museum. We rely on the efforts and work of the community and artists that support this institution to bring exciting, critical, and inspiring works of art to the museum. I hope that you will join us and fund our need. Thank you. too long. I was just finishing up a play camp with our campers this summer and boy have I made some new friends. If we haven't met before, my name is William Harding and I'm the Director of Education here at the Paris Gibson Square. I'm just getting myself comfortable because when I work in the studio, I like to get comfortable. And working in the studio that's comfortable helps you make some beautiful, fine art. Right now we're in room 10 of the museum where we host a lot of our education classes for adults, everything from watercolor, to oil painting, to acrylic, to our senior drawing class, and to our For the Love of Arts programming through our Kennedy Center cooperations. If you just have a moment today, I'd like to talk to you about a couple of aspects of Room 10 that need some tender loving care, just like the people in our community. Four of these aspects just deal with different parts of the room, including the windowsills, our blinds, the ceiling, and one of our back room shelves over here. So if you have a moment, I'd like to show you. So looking at these windows in the back here, we can see that they're part of the historic aspect of this building. And knowing that this is a historic building, we know that we need to continue on and take care of this building. These windows in the back here have not seen some love in quite some time. And being able to sand them, prime them, and put a fresh coat of paint will help preserve that aspect of the historic building. In this room too, when we're incorporating our drawing classes, we also have to be able to block out light to control lighting for our still lights and our figure drawing. These blinds in the back need some love as well. As you can see, not all of them are the same, and some of them are actually falling apart on us. Uh, with just a few good amount, uh, with a little bit of a donation, we'll be able to repair and replace these windows to a standard that fits an art studio. In this same area over here, we have a back cabinet with laminate that needs some love as well. Uh, we, the museum this past year has received a new boiler for our building and to access an aspect of replacing this boiler we've had to remove this cabinet 
uh, which has destroyed the, the laminate on top of the, the shelving over here. And we would like to also replace that. Uh, on this cabinet in the back here is where a lot of our students in our oil and our drawing and painting classes place their work. And we have to be able to move around and uh, place these pieces on the top. But with some of the damage on there, it becomes unsightly and then also restricts the use of the students to be able to use it. Another big aspect that we would like to focus on within this room is working on the ceiling, which in some parts you can see the slab and the parts that are falling off of old plaster that definitely need some love. Within the last year and a half, we've been able to replace the lights in here, but the ceiling above it also needs some tender loving care to help preserve the historic building that we are in. With your help and your donation, we will be able to provide a comfortable setting for our community to take part in these classes that the Paris Gibson Square provides. As Director of Education, I thank you for your time and hope you consider these offers that we are providing now. Thank you.